Hello friends, welcome to the newest installment of my developer series blog, a ride service delivery management app made in Flutter parse backend. In this series, we'll be constructing a live Flutter business friendly entry level project. Now throughout this series, we are going to break down this entire source code into manageable parts. You can find link to the entire source code in the video description below. As you can see, I have chosen back for app as my backend and Flutter as my front end. You can also change the source code and make it work on Firebase database instead. Now before we dive in, let me give you a quick demo so that you can decide if this series is really for you. So this is the first landing page, which is a login page. And here you can see I have included an email based authentication system. Users should also be able to use sign in with Google like social authentication method here. I have also included a link for forgot password. So in case if a user forgets the password, you can reset it using this link. There's also a couple of other features like dark mode and light mode. So you can see this is a very popular feature. People like it to use it on, on most of the Flutter website. And there's also feature, a multi-language feature I've added where users should be able to switch the languages of their preference. So for example, right now I'm using English as a language. Let me go change it to Spanish. So it didn't change it. So let, let me go to, the, sorry, I was the wrong page here. So here, as you can see, everything is in Spanish. So, and again, this cascades through the entire other uh, other pages as well. So what I mean to say here, once you change the language, the language will stay the same throughout the app. So we are going to design this feature in rest of the application here. Here in this screen, you are looking at a different version of this application. This is a different UI, as you can see, because navigations are listed at the bottom. And there are pages, UI pages included for live location and other services. And the reason I'm showing you this UI, because at this point, you might be starting off a development, you must start a basic version first. But always keep in mind that in the long version, what do you want to build? So for example, once you have the basic layout and you want to include some live location, restaurant services, grocery services, you want to have a different UI for update setting pages, you can always include those UI or you know, user experience later on. So we are going to build this UI in later phases, but for now we are going to start with very basic functionality UI. So as you can see in my main dot dot file here, again, this is just an example here. I have two different versions of the main dot dot file here. If I uncomment the first one and comment it out the second one, it will switch to the versions what I'm what I was showing you before. So here, let me go and you know uncheck this one. Let me save this and I'm going to you know reboot my application. So now our original application is back. First thing I want to show you here is the live error validation. This is a very, very important feature here. So as you can see, and it is checking for the email string, and you can also see the hint text or the email text changes as the user input the text data. Let me put a valid email and log in as a customer here. As you can see, this uh, opens a customer landing page. What you can do, you can include a Google map here, as long as you have the Google map API enabled here. But here I'm just showing a simple icon. Once you click on that, um, let me click on this, is going to show you all the recent rights you have taken using this application. So for example, I have only one ride. Let me try to edit it. And as long as the ride is, uh, as you can see, if you click on the edit ride, if you if you cancel this ride or if you complete the ride, you will not be able to change it. So I have included that kind of functionality in this one. For now, let me just change the date on this particular ride. So let's say I want to, you know, I want this ride on June 30th. Let me update this. As soon as you update it, you will see that there's a live message notification I have included uh, in this application. So if you go to the app, as you can see, if you go to the messages, you will see that you have recently updated your ride. Now let me go back and you can see the bits against that ride. So once you request a new ride, what you are doing, you are eventually inviting other drivers to come and bid on this particular ride. This is like not a like Uber layer application, it's like a service related um, app. So you are requesting services and you are inviting all the service provider to bid on your uh, requested service. Now let me use another email ID and here I'm going to sign in as a valid driver here. So here, as you can see, so the driver uh, so version is little different. The driver is going to see all the bits which he has like, you know, put it against the different services. But here, if you want to like, you know, for example, driver is looking for a new services to provide. You, what you can do, you can look at the services. You, the driver is not going to see any of the customer details. He will only see that somebody is requesting a particular ride from this location to this location. And what you can do, you can bid on that particular 
uh, right. So here, as soon as you bid on a particular ride without knowing the customer details, you will get a notification. And the customer will get a notification that one of the driver has bid on my particular service. So here, and then it's up to the customer, he accepted or not. And uh, you can see, you can again change the bids. Uh, you can, you know, uh, send small messages to the, uh, the person who is requesting the services. So for example, I'm going to charge $799 for, and I'm going to deliver it next week. So once you update the bits, you are going to see all those massive notification and uh, similar notification will be delivered to the customers. So this is a very simple app. It's a service related application, but you know, it's very useful application. So now here, as you can see, let me log in as a, a customer and the customer is going to see hey you know what there's a bit update on your right and say please go and check your um, check your bits and this up to the customer he accepted or not again this is a very simple entry level application here um, but again the point is you can add and update the functionalities and you can make it as complex as you want so for example, if you take a look at that in my uh, readme file here, you can see you can have these kind of functionalities included in this basic level application. Here I'm using Flutter and Parse as my backend. And the reason is some people say, think like, you know, MongoDB is a cheaper option here. And these are some basic level functionalities I have included in this community version. Again, there's a pro version also, uh, but that includes a lot of different functionalities. Here you'll be able to, as you can see, the basic file upload and all that, role-based architecture, app messaging feature, email authentication, so most of the feature is still a very useful uh, entry level application here. And once you have that, what you can do, the beauty of this application is you can take this community project is totally free of the cost. You'll be able to download entire source code without any cost. And then you can include the pro level features. So for example, you want to take the similar application and you want to include other services like food services and those kind of a thing, live maps, or live push notification, blue badge drivers. You can make it as complex as you want depending on your business requirement. But more, you know, what I, uh, the thing I want to emphasize, this is the community version and once you have the solid foundation built on this community version application, you can add more complexities, more, uh, 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 more functionalities to the application. As you can see, this application is like Apache license. What it means is that you can download download it entirely for free, you'll be able to modify it, distribute it without any licensing, licensing caution, all that. So I think that's all I wanted to share in this application. In future um, videos, what I want to show you that how to build this application. And once you have the idea how to build this basic community level application, once you understand how the how to design the pages and those things, you'll be able to, if you want to change it to the Firebase, I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to change the backend from um, back for app to Firebase. If in case like, you know, if you are having issues with MongoDB or if you want to like include Firebase, totally up to you. So one more thing I want to show you, how you can take the entire source code and you know uh, run it on your local machine. All you need to do, you go to this code and you download the entire source code on your machine. You will also need an account with back for app. So once you log into, once you create a basic back for app application, log in here, you will see two things, application ID and client key. Client key. All you need to do, copy those two things here. And once you have downloaded the source code, go to you know your main dot dot file and inside that main dot dot file, you will see two constant there: application ID and key client key, uh, key key client key, and you just paste it over there. Once you have created that back for app, you know again it's not a very secure application at this point, but in later videos I will show you how you can create this and you know how you can uh, make it more secure, how you can secure your backend. Again, this is not a production ready application, but the point is this is a basic community level version, and you shouldn't expect much from this application right now. So. Uh, that's all I wanted to show you in this particular video. I hope you like it and follow up videos as I said earlier, I'm going to, you know, um, make it more complex and, you know, I will, this is a entry level, you know, uh, developer friendly series. So basically I'm going to walk you through how to start, how to create this kind of um, application in your local environment. All right, so that's all I wanted to show. I hope you like this video. So if you like this video, please be kind enough and give it a star. That means a lot to me. If I get more star that, you know, uh, makes this app more successful and I will be adding more functionalities. For any code related issues, please do not reach out to YouTube. Instead, come to this repository, open a new issue log, and I'll be happy to help you out.